Hello. Hello. Hey, can you hear me okay? Okay. You can hear? Yes. Okay, good. Uh, well, yeah, nice to meet you. Uh, shame we didn't meet in person on Friday, but uh, that's okay. Um, don't worry about it. But yeah, the main the main idea was just to meet each other and start discussing initial thoughts about your project. Yes. So you're looking at the rogue wave formation with uh, spatially variable currents. Yeah. Which is a, a yeah, should be a really interesting project. It's not one I've run before. Um and it's it's basically come about because some people have released some uh, code for this. Uh so we can start playing around. So uh, what what um course are you on? Are you aerospace, mechanical, civil? No. What degree are you on? Pardon? I'm just asking what course are you on? Are you on aerospace, mechanical, or civil? Aerospace. Aerospace, okay. So you won't have covered any, um, any wave, water wave mechanics or anything like that yet? Okay, so I guess one of the first things then is just to uh, understand some some basic wave theory. <clears throat> yeah. I teach a, a course on this to third year civil engineers, so I can send you over some of my slides. And um, a good idea would be to yeah have a read over those just to get an understanding what can some of the wave parameters are. Send me the recording of your lecture. Uh, you maybe. Um, if I can give you access, I don't have the recordings myself, okay. uh, but I can send you some of the slides and uh, I'll see about the recording. And uh, I generally just start having a read about linear wave theory. So we're not going to do any nonlinear waves. Nonlinear waves, the mathematics becomes uh, rather complex yeah. um, and isn't required to understand this phenomenon that we're looking at on a basic level in the fact that we end up with refraction due to currents, spatially varying currents. So we're talking about X and Y rather than vertical profiles, so vertical changes in the currents, yeah. um, and how that then focuses waves in a particular location. And it can create really, really large waves that are obviously really damaging to things like vessels and offshore wind turbines and whatever we want to put in the sea. Yeah. Um, so I think, yeah, the, fir the first things first is to yeah, start to understand waves. I think sometime next this week, even you have to write a initial um, you have to write your initial project proposal. So have a think about that. I think we've got you know most of the stuff there is in in the initial uh, project brief that that you should already have. But you can have a think about the specific steps that you want to do, clear aims and objectives, and um, yeah, what those objectives are specifically in order to meet that aim. Yeah. Um, if you want to send over a draft, that's fine. <clears throat> if not, we'll discuss what you submit in our next meeting anyway, which will be next week. Okay. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I think this is could be a cool project. So I'll just share my screen. So how good are you at Python? What? Pardon? Do you have much experience in Python? No. No, okay. Just a little. Okay, so I'm I'm not amazing at Python either. My, I normally use MATLAB, but the um, the code that we have available, this ocean wave tracing, I don't know if I've sent you this. Um, I'll send you this link. Is in Python, so we're going to have to work in Python for this project. Okay. So uh, we can learn together. Um, but, uh, a couple of months ago, I did install this on a, unfortunately, not on this computer. So. I've figured out before, and you can essentially import different types of, uh, you know, current profiles that you want, different types of wave conditions, and then you can essentially uh, it will solve the, the these wave tracing equations. So you can see the instantaneous wave directions, but also you can kind of compute effectively like a density of these rays. Um, and that gives you something proportional to the wave height. So this allows us to understand how the wave heights will then vary spatially. Um, 
and that's based i think they have one paper on this here where they have um yeah you can sort of see the basic effect that we want to look at so a very simple jet so we have some variation in the current velocity in the y direction and you can see in certain directions the the rays will diverge and in, in the opposite direction they'll converge and when they converge we'll end up with large wave heights which are obviously very damaging so the basic aim of the project is to explore these relatively simple cases so starting with something like this um and exploring things like the different parameters of the waves relative to the conditions of this profile so one one key thing will be how fast are the waves propagating relative to the current speed yeah. and um <clears throat> therefore uh how much effect does the current have on our wave propagation things like that so you'll be able to map out that and then you can start playing around with some different types of profiles um and as we step through the project we can try and increase the realism of this um to more realistic wave conditions more realistic profiles okay. so that's the general plan i think um broadly broadly um I, I think a lot of this sort of understanding is coming about quite recently as people people start to understand um, or focus more on wave current interaction in general. Because when people do offshore design of structures, uh, a lot of the standards and guidance will be basically just considering waves. Um, but the effect of a current has a, does a couple of different things. Um, the first is that the current itself will introduce a drag force on whatever structure you're modeling. The second, it has really big, it can make really big modifications to the waves. So the basic effect is if I have a if I have a current that's in the same direction as the waves, and I propagate waves from a region with no current onto that current, then because the waves then become faster in the fixed reference frame, they spread out. So they become longer and they become smaller to conserve energy so that has a big implication on what the waves look like and what the, the resulting kinematics that drive the loads are uh, and the opposite of the truth so if i have a, a, a current opposing the waves uh the waves will essentially squash you'll get waves that are taller and shorter and travel slower yeah. so that's the basic wave current effect which we we can solve your project's looking at the the next level which is okay now the current isn't uniform so the waves need to then they'll refract into the direction of the current um, and that refraction will depend on the yeah the wave parameters and what that current profile is doing so that's really what we want to explore to try and figure out how how significant this effect can be <laughs> and i don't there's some quite cool stuff that can happen um for certain wave conditions in like a a current like that, uh, waves can get trapped, which is a very strange phenomenon. Um, and means that, you know, it's not like the waves will refract and then carry on. The waves will literally bounce off the edges of a current profile and can create some very, very interesting conditions that could be extremely hazardous. So, <clears throat> yeah, that's sort of the basic idea of the project. Do you have any questions on, on that so far? How can I get uh, full marks for the initial project? Yeah. There are no marks. It's, it's formative. Formative. OK. Yeah. So the only the point of this initial plan is just to, for you to start thinking about it and make sure you've thought about how you're going to go about this project. OK. So um, even I make a um, bad plan, I still get 5%. There's no, no, so the, the initial one, the formative one is due next week, right? Yeah. Uh, I didn't think there was any marks associated with that. Okay. Uh, you're saying it's 5%? Yeah. Okay, That's... let me let me double check the handbook now. I'll just get the handbook. Because my understanding was that it was just formative. Maybe they've changed it this year. Um, have a look. I don't 
No, you're right. It is formative. It is formative. Okay. Um, okay, so in that case, you want to have really clear aims and objectives. Um, and you want to think about what all the specific objectives. So make sure you're clear what the difference is between aims and objectives. Um, <clears throat> make sure you, you have some idea of the plan of how you're going to do those tasks within that time frame. Yeah. So a good idea would be to have a, a Gantt chart. Okay. And this allows you to then reflect later on um, on how, you, how your plan has evolved and how, you know, as, as you've learned more of the things that were actually required to do it, that you've evolved your plan. So there's, there's marks for your final report and your sort of project management and reflection which is a good idea to be able to then step through and show how you changed, changed the plan and how the plan become more detailed and more evolved as time goes on. Okay. So, but yeah, just a just a rough plan with with a, a few key key tasks would be fine for the initial plan. Okay. You'd probably want a you know a brief paragraph on the background and motivation of the project. So, being able to discuss some of the things we discussed today around the fact that, you know, the currents have a significant effect on the waves. It is these real waves and real currents that we need to design these offshore systems for, that this is often ignored. Um, so we're going to look at how current, spatially varying current can modify the wave conditions in order to understand how that might affect our worst case waves and how that will then subsequently affect the design of our system. So I think something around that, a clear aim, uh, clear objectives, and a, a Gantt chart should be fine. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. And I try to read some books on these topics. Uh, very good during the introduction phase, but when mathematics was added, I couldn't understand it anymore. Which bit? Sorry. Yeah. Mm, I try to read some books on on these topics very good during the introduction phase. But when mathematics was added, I couldn't understand it anymore. Mm. Okay, so you've already started reading? Yeah. Uh, what okay, that's very good. Uh, what math knowledge that I haven't learned yet for this? Mm. Okay, so you don't need to understand all of the maths. Okay. But you do need to have an appreciation of what the maths is telling you around the key physics. So, yeah, it's good to have an understanding of you know, generally what we mean, um, the general mathematical description of water waves. <clears throat> you don't need to know exactly how to f how to derive these expressions. You're not going to be doing a mathematical project. You're going to be doing a, a code sensitivity study, basically. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't worry about too much about the math, but you do need to understand enough in order to be able to describe the physical problem of wave code interaction and be able to explain some of the effects that you're seeing. And from that, then be able to design the test cases. But that's something we can discuss together. You don't need to be understanding all of the math. Okay. Um, but have you seen the paper related to this uh, code? No. Okay, so I'll send I'll send over the link to the code. Yeah. Uh, I'll send over the link to the paper that discusses the model. Yeah. I'll send over some slides for linear wave theory. <clears throat> um, and I think that would be a good start. Okay. Um, and then in the next week or so, I'll try and remind myself how I installed the code. But there's a few ways we could do that from my understanding. Um, but maybe you can start to have a look at that as well and see how you might want to install it using what sort of Python IDE um, and try and get familiar with that as well. Um, but in, yeah, if you get stuck, we'll figure it out together. Yeah. And uh, what, what person knowledge should I then then know? Mm. Well, it's it's not going to be very complex, right? <clears throat> in fact, I actually think probably the most complex thing is going to be installing it and getting the initial code package running. Mm. And then all we're going to be really doing is varying a few things, right? So you, we're going to need to be able to, you know, numerically create what these current profiles are. So we need to give a current velocity as a function of x and y. Then we need to be able to specify <clears throat> what the wave conditions are, wave directions, wave amplitudes, wave periods, and that's it. 
Um, so as long as we have some basic code to create these inputs <clears throat> using things like NumPy, I don't know if you use that, but you need we'll need to be using NumPy arrays um, in order to give give these inputs, and that's what we'll be operating on. Yeah. Um, so I don't think the coding is is that difficult. You, you'll then probably want to at some point go, okay, I've now got a code which runs for one wave case and one current case. And I then want to create higher level loops that will loop through wave conditions, loop through wave angles, loop through current profiles, store outputs, and then use that as the, sort of the main set of data that you will interpret for your project. Uh, but that's just loops, right? So once we've got the core of the code working, then we can just loop over those um, and spit out different outputs that we want to explore. Yeah. Okay. So I don't, yeah. I, I, as I say, I'm not an expert in Python, but I know enough coding in Python in general that we won't get stuck on the coding. Um, so we should be fine. And it, do you do you have you done a lot of MATLAB? Mm, no, not good. Not good. Okay. <laughs> well, hopefully, at the end of this project, um, you will be quite good at Python and have some confidence in uh, in that as well. So yeah. hopefully, we both we both become a bit better at Python. So. Okay. That could be good for both of us, yeah. <laughs> okay, great. Any, sorry, what were you saying? No, nothing. Nothing. Okay. So, well, let's do that then. I'll send you over some some things. Yeah. Don't be overwhelmed by the maths. You don't. At the end of the day, you're going to be tweaking a bit of code and trying to interpret the results. You obviously then eventually need to understand enough to give context to your to your project. And to your yeah your objectives and your your test program, um, the conditions that you're actually looking at. Yeah. But you've got plenty of time, and we can discuss this over the the several months that we have together. So, okay. But yes, make a start, and uh, we'll we'll get there. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, if there's, if there's nothing else, then we'll catch up next week. Okay, um, <clears throat> at the moment, the sessions are on the wrong time on the wrong day. So um, in the timetable, they're on Wednesday in morning. Yeah. That clashes with my lectures, and it also clashes with some of my students' lectures. Um, so we need to move these. What I might do for now is do them similar to how I did them last week, which is arrange times directly with you guys, because they only give me one hour a week timetable session, one hour every two weeks for six students. So giving people 10 minutes each is kind of crazy. So I'll try to double that and we'll we'll set a two hour session where everyone has 20 minutes. Um, but that's my current plan at the moment. I might, I might join together the meetings sometimes for the other students because they have shared projects, but you're the only one doing this one. So we can, we'll just have one-on-one -on -one meetings. Okay. okay, great. Well, nice to meet you. And um, yeah, hopefully, Give me a shout if you have any questions on anything, and I'll follow up with these things uh, now. Okay. I, I will email you for other questions. Yeah, 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 sounds good. Yeah. See you next time. Okay. See you shortly. Bye.